Okay, so this lesson is going to show you how to do vector addition in two dimensions using uh, laws of sines and cosines as opposed to using X and Y components. Uh, before we begin, just a quick reminder of uh, how the laws of sines, sines and cosines work and what they are. Um, as you can see on the board here, there's a triangle. Remember that we always note angles with capital letters and side lengths with lowercase letters. And the law of cosines tells us that you can find a side length given one angle and two other side lengths. Uh, law of sines tells us that, and this would apply for sine A over A, sine B over B, also sine C over C. So for any given two sides, you can find an angle if you know the other two sides and one other angle. Um, yeah, so if you want to take a moment and write that down, you can go ahead and pause the, pause the video. Otherwise, I'm going to move into an example that we did yesterday in class with the chickadee, uh, but we solved it using um, X and Y components. Now we're going to solve it using law of sines and cosines. So here it is. Here's the example that we did yesterday in class, but we're going to solve it using a different strategy. And you're going to find that the strategy is much shorter, but there's actually a little bit of more room for error. And it's not as strategic as using just one step than the next as we do with X's and Y's. The first thing that you do when solving a problem with sines and cosines is you actually draw a picture and you draw a, a vector diagram or a vector triangle because we, if we're going to use sines and cosines, we need a triangle. So how you do that is you begin by identifying sort of the first, in the, the first vector because essentially what we're doing is a vector add. We're, we're looking for an overall displacement which is going to be d1 plus d2 where d1 is the first motion of the little chickadee, and D2 is the second. So we're actually going to draw sort of what the chickadee's path would look like, and then we'll draw a vector to represent the actual overall displacement. When you draw the vectors, you don't need to draw it to scale, though if you did draw it to scale, you could actually make the whole problem simpler by just measuring the answer and measuring the angle. But we're not going to do that. We're going to estimate. So I'm going to draw this vector, uh, D1 vector, 125 meters, 35 degrees east of north. I'm going to start that by drawing just a little coordinate axis right there, just to give me a reference, because I'm going to have to be able to figure out all the angles later. So if I was going to draw 125 meters, 35 degrees east of north, it would look, you know, something like, let's say, like that. Keeping in mind that this angle right there is uh, 35 degrees because this would represent north. And so in between the north and my vector is uh, 35 degrees. So I'm just going to write that side length on there, 125. And notice I put the arrow, the arrow to represent that it is a vector, not just a triangle. Now when I add my second vector, my D2 vector, the strategy you should follow is draw a coordinate system again, basically where the last one uh, point ended, the last vector ended, which makes sense. Our chickadee starts, flies 125 meters, and then turns around. So at this point here, we should represent our show a change of direction. And so from this point, our chickadee goes 75 meters south, 64 degrees east. Well, remember, south is down here, and then 64 degrees east, so it probably looks something like that, okay? Where this angle right here would be the uh, 64 degrees, and this length here will be 75 meters. Again, I'm estimating the length, so it's not going to be a perfect triangle, but you want to make it look approximately right. Essentially, then, the overall displacement, the resultant displacement for our chickadee is from where her path started to where her path finished. And this is delta D. So two things we have to find. We have to find the magnitude of delta D, but we also have to find the angle. And we'll get to that later, but essentially it's going to involve finding this angle right there. And I'm just going to leave that, and we're going to work first on finding the magnitude of delta D. This is where you remember cosine law. And if you remember cosine law, that would tell you that delta D squared equals 125 squared plus 75 squared minus 2, 125, 75 cos of the opposite angle. Now, right now, I don't know my opposite angle. If you look, I've got 64 degrees here, 
but I don't know the full contained angle. This is where you do use what you learned in grade 9 math. Um, I'm going to use the Z law for parallel lines because I have a parallel line on my two axes. Over here, by the start of my D1, I've got one line that goes straight up and down representing north. And over here, by my 64 degrees, I've got another line that goes down. Knowing that this is 35 degrees and following my Z, following the Z along, you should realize that this too is going to be 35 degrees. I'm just showing my parallel lines. So that means that the contained angle across from delta D is going to be the sum or 99 degrees, the sum of 35 and 64. So now when I use my cosine law, I now know what angle to put in beside cos. It's going to be cos 99. I'll leave you to work through the math and you end up and just give you the answer of 155.6, which you should know because that's about what we got yesterday using um, X and Y components. So now we know the magnitude of our delta D. Now it comes to finding the angle. To find the angle, we need to look at this theta inside and we have to solve for theta. That's not going to give us the whole picture, but I will show you how we can get the delta D, because we want to be able to express it in terms of north and east. So just the contained angle in the triangle isn't enough. We need to relate it. So if we get, I'm just going to redraw, sort of make everything a little bit bigger here. So this vector sort of represents my 125, where this is 35 degrees here. Here's my delta D with my theta. So to solve, I can either find, ideally I think what I'll do is I'll find theta this is delta D right here. And then once I know theta, I can then report delta D as being 35 plus theta east of north. Okay? So that's how we're going to approach it. And we're going to solve the triangle using uh, sine law. We have enough information to do that because I can say that sine of theta over 75 equals sine of 99 over my delta D, which is 155.6. And rearranging, you can say theta equals sine minus 1 and you can solve and find that theta is equal to 28 degrees. Remember, it's okay to stop the video at any time to work through the math on your own or um, just to you know, reflect upon what I'm saying if I'm going a bit quick for you. Okay, so once you know theta equals 28 degrees, so here's 28, and I want to report my final answer. I'm going to do that right here. I'm going to say that the angle between, um, between the north and my delta D is going to be 35 plus 28, which is equal to uh, 63 degrees. Therefore, delta D is equal to 155 meters, or 156 meters, rounded, uh, 63 degrees east of north. Remembering that I've got the north, and I'm going to travel uh, 63 degrees east, and I get my delta D. Now, if you remember from me, if you look at yesterday's solution with X and Y components, I think we said the angle was um, 27 degrees north of east, and they are the same. So you could also report that as 155 meters, 27 degrees north of east. So that's an example of using sines and cosines to solve. If you like that strategy, you're totally welcome to use it, knowing that at some point you're going to have to come back to X and Y components for other parts of the course. Um, just quickly, if you'd like to go through, page 15 in your textbook has another sample problem you can look at. So page 15 is another sample problem using sines and cosines that you can go through. The other thing is if you're in calculus class, you'll have to learn this method anyway. So it might be good for you to spend some time on. And if you need any help, you can let me know.